In this video, we are going to take a look at our brush tool. And specifically, we're going to take a look at how to create our own custom brushes. Illustrator has three brush types. We have a scatter brush, a art brush, and a pattern brush. Now over in my toolbar here, I'm going to go and take a look at the brush icon. And you can also press B on your keyboard to get to that brush very easily. Now I already have a brand new artboard created that I'm going to go and double click on my artboard to get that up. Now you also want to ensure that you have your brush panel. Now the brush panel is going to allow us to select different types of brushes. As you can see, I have my brush panel here. To open that up, if you do not have it, you can go under window and brushes, and that will allow you to open that up. And also you can get to it on the top of your screen and that will have a variety of options for your brush. So you can also find um, your brush types in the top drop down menu of your brush definition. And this one here is what we call our brush width profile. So how we want that uh, width of the brush to react. So if we go and paint on our screen, I'm just going to create, create a basic curve here. Now you can see that we have the color of the stroke is seen here and I have none for the fill. If you have a fill listed on here, I'm just going to select my stroke and I'm going to put a fill. You'll notice that that fill is listed in between the ends of the path. So all strokes are going to be paths and they're going to be open paths, so not a closed uh, shape. Now we would have to close that up afterwards if that's something that you want to do. So I'm just going to go back and delete this. So we're using a five point round. Now I can see that when I create that brush, I want it to have a tapered look to this. So I'm going to have to create a brand new brush to create a, a tapered look. And a tapered brush is good for things like hair or anything that you want to have a um, sort of a tip to the end of it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and delete that. All right, so we're going to create our first custom brush. And to do that, we're going to use a fill for this one. I'm just going to create a black fill. And for my stroke, I'm going to say none. Okay, so back to my swatches. Now I'm going to use my ellipse tool. And I'm going to create just a very, very thin oval. Okay, so we want to have just a very flat looking oval here. Now the whole idea is I want to ensure that I have a tapered look at both ends. So if I were to zoom in here, um, you can see that we actually still have, I'm just going to view, um, going, you'll see that there is a slight curve on that and I want it to be very sharp at the ends. So what I'll do is I'll grab my direct selection tool and I'm going to select both of the end anchor points by holding down shift so I can select both my anchor points here. Now at the top of my options bar, I can see I can convert those anchor points to a rounded curve to a point. So I'm going to click on the point and now we have a nice sharp end at either side. So I'm going to go and zoom out. And our next step to create our brush is very simple. Now all you need to do is select the object or the objects that you want to create a brush with and we simply drag and drop them over top of our brushes panel. So once you drop it in, a dialog box will appear asking you what type of brush you want to use. Well this one is going to be an art brush. Okay, So we're going to select the second option there and we'll say OK. Now the next dialog box that pops up is options for that. Well, we're going to name this brush. This is going to be my tapered hair look, hair brush. Now the width of this is going to be fixed. I don't ever want to change the width. I want to stretch it to fill the stroke length. Now as you can see, this is the direction in which the stroke will be drawn with and that's how the stroke is going to appear on top of it. Now we can change the direction whether we want to stroke from right to left or from top to bottom. However, because this is um, a brush that's the same on both sides, it's not going to matter what direction it is in. Now the colorization is quite important here. Right now we have made a black stroke. What we want to do is we want to ensure that any stroke color I choose in my swatches 
that is applied to the stroke. So what we'll need to do is change the method to tint. So because we're working with black, any color we add on top of it is going to be a tint of that color. So it's going to brighten that color up. And once we say that, we're going to say OK. All right, so I'm just going to remove that original shape there. Now I'm going to go back and grab my brush tool. So I'll be on the keyboard. And I'm going to get my swatches ready. So I don't want to fill, but I do want to stroke color. And I'm going to choose a just a rose color here. So now I'm going to paint on the screen. And we have that nice flow tapered stroke in here. And because it's changing colors, it's because we've chosen the tint option in the colorization. Now we can select that stroke and let's say I wanted to edit it or I wanted to change the way that that stroke is uh, for, uh, functioning here. So back in my brushes panel, it will declare what brush that I have used on that particular stroke. So I can go over and hover over it. You can see the name that we've changed it to. And if I double click on that icon, we can bring back up our, our brush options. So what I can do here is I can change the way um, that I want this to look. For perhaps I want to scale proportionately. And because I have my preview on here, I can see how this is going to react. So if we're scaling it proportionately, that just uh, widens the, the width profile a little bit. Stretch to fit the stroke length. or stretch between guides and at this point we're not going to see a, a very big change here because we're not using um, we're not using any complex objects so just going to keep it back to fit stroke length and say okay all right so let's take a look at creating um, a different style of brush and this time I'm going to use multiple objects. So here I have um, an object that looks like a branch and I want that to be my brush um, moving forward. So I'm going to add a little bit of a tapered um, end to this branch. So again, I'm going to go and use my ellipse tool and I'm going to create just a tapered end. So here I'm going to change the color to match that branch. And again, I'm going to use my direct selection tool to convert that anchor point to a sharp point. All right, so now we have a purple or a mauve looking type of branch. I'm going to select both of those objects that I have. And the same idea, I'm going to drag it right into my brush panel. Now this one, I still want to create an art brush and I'm going to say OK. And here we're going to uh, keep it the stretch the stroke uh, length. Now the colorization, notice how the key color shows a purple that we've um, already addressed in that shape. And I want to go back and colorize this. Well, if I were to select tints and say OK, now when I go and create this brush, I'm going to set up the colors here. And I'm going to choose a different color. Let's say I wanted to make it green. Okay, and I go and change it. Okay, so as we can see, it changes to a nice green, but it's not as rich as the green that I've actually wanted to select it as. Now that is because we are using it as a purple and then applying a different color on top. So what we can do is we can change this to black and white and it will apply properly once we um, adjust it. So let's go ahead and try a new one. And this one, I've created a banner. So I have two black and white banners that I have. And I'm going to select that one gray, drag it into my new brush, create an art brush, and say OK. I'm going to say tints. And this is going to be a banner brush. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my brush tool, grab a color, and when I change that color, you can see that that lightens up. Okay, so that light gray is applied 
um, or the pink is applied to that light gray and so forth. Now with the black, I'm going to show you how that works differently with the black. Again, we're choosing tints. And I'm going to use that same rose color. And when I brush it, now we get that more deep, rich, original base color that I had selected. So anything that is black will remain the rich color of the swatch you chose. And any um, opacity or any um, dullness of that black is going to appear as a little bit lighter. So as you can see, this was the original for the lighter pink and this is the original for the darker pink. Okay, so you can see how that black is appearing. All right, so let's go take a look at creating a scatter brush. I'm just going to remove these. Once I delete them off my screen, it still remains in my brushes panel. So now I have a nice floral object and I want that object to be scattered across the, the page while I paint. So let's say that I was creating, well, we're gonna go and create a little path for our scatter. So there's my path that I want to create and my object I'm going to drag and drop it into my brushes and we're going to say scatter. So here I have my watercolor flower. Now as you can see our dialog box has a brand new uh, set of options. We have size, spacing, scatter and rotation and we have two sets of these but one appears grayed out. Now what these are referring to, if you look at the little icon right beside it, it refers to the uh, above and below the path. So currently this would be the below the path and this would be, this side would be above the path. So let's say I want to have randomized sizes of my flower and below the path we're going to have from 10% and I want the size to um, scale from 10% up to the original 100%. With the spacing, the same thing. So we're going to change our spacing to random. And I want our spacing to go from 10% up to 100. With our scatter, I'm going to have a random scatter. And here I want to have, well, about 600 or so percent. And I'm going to increase the scatter on the opposite side of the path as well. Now the rotation is important so that not all the objects appear at the same uh, position of the rotation. I want to rotate it so I want to have at least 180 on one side to about a 90 on the other. Colorization remains the same as what we talked about with the banners. So I'm going to keep that um, just pink for now and say OK. All right, so I want to apply that scatter brush that we made to this path that I created here. So what I'll do is I'll select the path that I created and I'll come over here and click on my watercolor flower. Now, as you can see, we have a really cool scatter of those flowers around the path. So the actual stroke color of that path has disappeared and we have re um, reverted it to a scatter brush. So we can put it back to that tapered look or we can add that scatter on top of it. Now we can also paint with that scatter. So I'm just going to delete that and start fresh with my paintbrush tool. And as I paint and release the paintbrush, you will see that scatter to appear. Okay, now moving on, we're going to take a look at the pattern brush. Now the pattern brush is something that is unique in that the pattern gets repeated on both the left and the right side. So whatever brush you create, you want to create something that has a symmetrical look on either side. So I have a little ornament here that I've created and I want to create a pattern from that. So every time I draw it, it's going to repeat itself in um, over top of the, the path that I've made. So what we'll do is I'm going to create um, a path again. So I'm just going to create any sort of path here. 
and it's okay that we have that scatter on it. I'm just going to change it back to my tapered brush. And of course it has to be selected. And I'm going to select that ornament and I'm going to drag it into my brushes and now we're going to say pattern brush and okay. Now with the pattern brush we got a whole new set of options and I'm just going to name this my ornament pattern brush. Now here we have how that pattern is going to be positioned on the path. And the first one is, well, how do you want that corner to react? Do I want that corner to be sliced in half? Do I want it to be centered? Do I want it to overlap? So you have a lot of different options to use with this. I'm gonna slice mine because I wanna have it cut at the corners. So I'm gonna keep that as default. Now the next one here shows uh, the original. So how, what is going to happen at, with the actual path? Now you can also change the the opposite corner, so whether it's being drawn outward or inward, and how you want that path to end off. Perhaps we want a brand new um, ornament at the end of that path. Well, we can always come in here and choose a different type of ornament. Now, the fit, I'm going to stretch to fit. You can also do a space to fit, and as you can see, it spaces each time that it's drawn. But I want to stretch it. I want them to be uh, touching on either side. Now my colorization here, I'm going to use tints and I'm going to say OK. So I'm going to go over to that stroke that I originally drew and I'm going to select my ornament pattern. And as you can see, the color that I have on my stroke is now changed to that ornament. So I can come in here and change that color at any time. So with my brush, I have my ornament selected and we can come around and do any type of shape with that pattern. So there you have it. We have our scatter brushes, our art brushes, and our pattern and our pattern brushes. All right, thanks for watching guys and we'll talk to you soon.